up. Trump's wall continues to divide Congress, why you shouldn't rule out another government shutdown. And more on how one city is getting some unexpected weather, shocking its residents. All that and more today, Monday, February 11th. Good morning, Emerson. I'm Tyler Robichaux, filling in for Juliana Bruno. And I'm Sydney Zuckerman. This has been a wild week for news. It's getting pretty crazy in Washington and Virginia. It sure is. Let's get into it. Here are this week's top stories. The government isn't shut down anymore, but that could change. Washington has failed to reach an agreement in border security, despite many on both sides believing that a compromise could have been reached this weekend. Trump's stopgap bill is currently granting funding for parts of the government previously shut down. The deadline for the bill is fast approaching, meaning the government could shut down again. It's a scandalous week for Virginia. Right now, we have Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax saying he will not be stepping down from his position. Demands for his resignation come after two women accused him of sexual assault, including one count of rape. While Fairfax acknowledges the interactions with the woman, he claims that both instances were consensual. There have been threats of impeachment. This comes just days after Virginia's governor, Ralph Northam, confirmed that he did wear blackface in high school. He too has said he will not be stepping down. Two female senators joined the presidential race. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren and Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar <coughs> made their announcements this past weekend. Senator Warren made hers at a rally in Lawrence and challenged other candidates to follow her lead and refuse money from lobbyists and corporate PACs. Senator Klobuchar made hers in Minneapolis, making her the fifth congresswoman to enter what is likely to be a very crowded race. We are just about two months away from my favorite day of the year, tax day. But don't get too excited just yet. The latest stats show a decrease in average refund this year. That means less money coming back into your pocket. The IRS started using a new tax bracket last year, and now some experts are saying that if you didn't adjust your paycheck withholdings once these, once these new effects came into being, then that could be why your refund is lower. While I'm no Alex Haskell, I have noticed Boston's lighter on snow this year than usual. But that's not the case for all cities. Seattle got the most snow it's seen in 70 years this weekend, a total of 10 inches, staggering for the region. And they're not in the clear just yet. A new storm hit the area last night, and a second is expected to follow, sending the city into a flurry frenzy until mid this week. That's all we've got for you newswise. Now let's go to Alex Haskell, who's got your five-day forecast. Thanks, Tyler and Sydney, and good morning, everyone. Here's a look at Boston's forecast for the week. Today, temperatures will be a little warmer than they were on Sunday. We're looking at a high of 36 and low of 20. We're going to have some clouds around in the morning, and then they'll disappear for the day. Then we go into Tuesday. Um, we'll start to see some sunshine to beginning Tuesday morning. But later in the afternoon, around 4 p.m., we can expect to start seeing some snow. As we get deeper into the afternoon commute around 7 p.m., the snow's going to really pick up and become pretty pronounced in the evening hours. Then the snow will turn into a mix early Wednesday morning and then change into rain. It will taper off as showers later in the morning. It will also warm up a bit Wednesday compared to the beginning of the week. We'll see a high of 45 Thursday, uh, Valentine's Day. Right now, we're looking at a high of 42 degrees, and then we'll end the week on warmer temperatures. All right, good morning, guys. Good morning. Uh, so we have some snow in the forecast. Not the news we wanted to hear, um, but some good news. Uh, we're going to have that mix in rain, and it'll make sure that the snow doesn't pile up. Um, oh thank God. Yeah, so we'll be good to go. Valentine's Day. Looking really good, so if you guys got any plans, which I hope you do, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it'll be a nice day just to walk and go out. Yeah, yeah. it looked like yeah. Valentine's Day was supposed to be the nicest day of the week, right? Yeah, yes, and then um, the week will end pretty good, so nice temperatures, so we have that to look forward to. We just have to get through the snow. Yeah, thank awesome. you so much. Yeah, no but, problem. Um, 
Now let's actually head over to our sports correspondent, Angel Salcedo, who will tell us about a rule that could change in the NFL. Let's start off with the college basketball showdown that featured the Duke Blue Devils against the Virginia Cavaliers. The game was pretty easily controlled by the Blue Devils starting lineup. R.J. Barrett finished with 26 points, while Zion Williamson and Cam Reddish dropped 18 and 17 respectively. The Virginia backcourt played well with both Kyle Guy and Ty Jerome putting up 16 points. But the Cavaliers never really threatened in this one and fell to the Blue Devils 71 to 81. The MLB is focused on a proposed rule change that would introduce a universal designated hitter. The change would remove the need for pitchers in the National League to bat while also opening up 15 spots for some of the best hitters on the planet to do what they do best. This decreases injury risk for pitchers and generally speeds up the game because, let's be honest, no one really expects anything remotely entertaining to come from a pitcher at the plate. On the NFL side of the rule change train, Goodell and his friends up in the league office are finally looking at changes to the catch rule. The catch rule has left the NFL confused for decades. So to try and stop any future heartbreaks, the NFL have revised the requirements for a play to be ruled a catch. First, the player has to have control of the ball. Duh. Second, the player must have two feet touched in bounds or another body part. And finally, the player must have the ability to make a football move towards the goal line, such as making a third step or reaching for a first down. Hopefully this will make being a Julio Jones and OBJ fan a little bit easier next year. And finally, UFC President Dana White has put off deciding whether or not to strip Robert Whitaker of his middleweight title. Whitaker was expected to defend his title against Kelvin Gastelum this past Saturday night, but was rushed to the hospital with a hernia. Surprisingly enough, actor Matt Damon, of all people, told White that hernia injuries take more than four to six weeks to heal and that the UFC should play the situation by ear. So if you ever find yourself confused about athletic injury, just ask Matt Damon because apparently he knows more than UFC doctors. That's the latest in sports. Back to you, Tyler and Sydney. Now let's hear from our Emerson News correspondent, Maria Sato, who's got the latest on what's happening around campus. Film Immersion held its second 48-hour film festival this weekend. With a given theme, genre, prop, and word, students teamed up and created a three-minute film in only two days. In the end, students were able to show their films at the AMC Theater, and the winner received a free movie ticket. Uh, the hardest part of organizing the 48 is coordinating all the different teams into groups and assigning them times and slots. Uh, just because there's so many teams, there's so much participation, uh, it takes a really long time for us to get that all together. Uh, I think the biggest takeaway I want students to have from the festival is that um, it's just the, the chance to create something outside of class, the chance to make a project on their own that they can use for their reels, for just for experience. Um, and you, you get a lot of really good work coming out of the festival because of the time constraints. People put a lot of thought into it. And there's also the pressure of having to screen it in front of everyone. So people want to make their projects good. What I'm most excited about for the 48 Hour Film Festival is just getting to work with a whole bunch of filmmakers and coming up with a new idea and really just making a product that we're all proud of. I did it last semester and my group kind of took it a little too seriously. We tried to make like a great film instead of a fun film. So this uh, this time around, I really want to make a film that's like that I had fun making and that's kind of like goofier. I'm most excited about just improving on the skills that I honed last time during the festival and just learning how to make a film on a very strict schedule and a very limited amount of resources. I mean, it'd be cool to win, but that's not my goal. My goal is to like make a movie that I like enough to where I can show other people. Good morning, Emerson. I'm Maria Sato, your Emerson News Correspondent. Thanks, Maria. We're going to take a quick commercial break. But when we return, Elizabeth Perkin has all the tea on Ariana Grande's new feud. When I arrive at my destination, I am going to kill Bill. I'm Nate. And I'm Casey, and we're the National Broadcasting Society. Come out to some of our weekly workshops, or work on some of our sets. Explore the bigger picture with NBS. We'll see you there. All right, let's get another take. Camera, down.
Hi, I'm Mary Malloy, the host of Speechless, and you're watching The Emerson Channel. Welcome back to Good Morning Emerson. Let's hear from Elizabeth Perkin on all the news that's making headlines in the entertainment industry this week. Thanks, guys. Julian Edelman appears on The Ellen Show the other day to discuss his Super Bowl MVP title and his third Super Bowl ring. What he didn't expect was for Ellen to shave off his beard and spend the entire, he spent the entire season growing. Ellen offered him $10,000 for the Boys and Girls Club of Boston if she could shave his beard. Not only did he agree, but he matched Ellen's offer. Ariana is on cloud nine with her second album in six months, but Grammy's producer Ken Ehrlich tried to rain on her parade. You might be wondering why Ariana didn't perform any of her hits at the Grammys last night, and that's because she believes that her creativity and self-expression were stifled by Ehrlich. He accused her of not being able to pull something together, but she fired back saying that he was lying and that they all knew that she could pull together a performance overnight. One tweet started it all. Chrissy Teigen tweeted at Ale Alexandra Coso Cortez, inviting her to watch the Grammys. The Democratic comics woman replied with an outstanding yes and even added that they could live tweet together about her burning something in the kitchen. If that isn't goals, I don't know what is. Now let's spill all the tea about the 61st Grammys that took place last night. Tyler and Sydney, what did you guys think of Dolly Parton's star-studded performance? I mean, I love my country queen, Dolly Parton, Absolutely. so I was amazed by it. Yes. I think it's great that they honored her, like such a legend, you know? Who was your favorite guest performer that she had on with her? I, I think Miley Cyrus, personally. I was going to go with Miley the also, yeah. The goddaughter of Dolly Parton. Right, that's such just a crazy yes. dynamic, and uh -huh. it just makes everything better. You know that it's like real and genuine whenever yes. they're performing. And her mm -hmm. outfit was from Dolly's closet herself. Oh I my, didn't know that. Yeah, right? I hadn't heard that Isn't either. That crazy? That's crazy. Yeah, and what did you guys think of Album of the Year going to Casey Musgraves? Musgraves? You know, <laughs> I wasn't sold on it. I understand it was good. It was a little bit different uh -huh. vibe than what we're used to, so that was definitely interesting, but I don't know. I just thought there was a lot of good other albums. I was shocked. I'm a Casey Musgraves, like, stan, <laughs> so I was really excited about her winning, yeah. mm -hmm. but I, I think I might be in the minority, because I hear a lot of people didn't even know who she was. That's what I was just about to say. I feel like so many people are like, what is she rooting for again? Stop sleeping yes. on Casey Musgraves. Yes. And what did we think of Alicia Keys hosting the Grammys? It was her first time, the 15-time Grammy Award winner. I mean, I think she did great. Yeah, yeah I definitely. I loved her woman empowerment that she had in the entire show, bringing up, like, Michelle Obama, Lady Gaga, J-Lo. Yes. Yeah, Amazing. she definitely had a lot of great like references and yes. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, definitely a really great performance. I know, I loved it. Yeah. Um, but now let's go to our Life Hacks correspondent, Samantha, and learn about how to make a yummy treat this winter. Hey everyone, it's your Life Hacks correspondent, Samantha Wolf. And for today's Life Hack, it's sometimes difficult living in a dorm to bake and cook the way you could at home. But today, I have recipe to make a cake inside the microwave. Let's get started. So we're going to start by cutting two tablespoons of butter and adding it to our mug. Now we're going to put it in the microwave. We're going to put in two tablespoons of milk. Next we're going to add in two tablespoons of sugar. We're going to mix that all together. Next, we're going to add in four tablespoons of flour. And we're going to mix that together. Next, we're going to put in a half a teaspoon of baking powder. And this is our final step. We're going to mix it up. Now we're going to put it in the microwave for one minute. Now that our cake is out of the microwave, I'm going to put some icing on top. Because what's a cake without some icing? So now that our mug cake is all iced and ready, I'm going to take a bite. That's really good! So this is 
a perfect way to celebrate anyone's birthday while you're in a dorm. All you need is some basic ingredients and a microwave. We'll see you next time for Life Hacks. Thank you, Sam. We're now here with Jess Costas, who recently studied, uh, returned from studying abroad at Castiel Well in the Netherlands. She's here to tell us all about her travels. Hello. Hi. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, of course. So what made you decide that you wanted to study abroad? Actually, when I was like, ever since then, my dream school, like ever since I was in middle school, and when I was a sophomore in high school, I had a counselor at this conference I was at, and he went to Emerson, and he told me all about this castle experience, so right. that was like something I really wanted to take advantage of. You know, I'm glad you did, because that was one of the things that originally drew me to Emerson, and I didn't end up getting to go, mm -hmm. but I always, I feel like everyone has the best experiences there. What's it like studying and living in a castle? It's honestly like... One of the coolest experiences, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's just like summer camp for college students and the community you have there is unlike anything you can have in Boston. So that was really unique. That's, That's awesome. awesome, yeah. So um, you said it's like summer camp, is the workload different there? Did you get to travel more? Or? Well, the workload I definitely found was a lot more than I was anticipating because they don't really care that like you're traveling every weekend, it's kind of like all the orgs you're involved in here kind of equals out to that. But it's definitely a great way to learn how like time manage things. I didn't realize there were so many orgs there too. Not really, just like the traveling is com uh, okay. like what parallel your, with that. That's awesome. What was your favorite place you traveled? Prague was definitely a really beautiful place. I had perfect weather and I just felt like I had the oh. most opportunities in that city and I was there for the longest time. Now, there's something that everyone always talks about, and mm -hmm. it's American Night, and I also didn't get to go. So can you yeah. explain to us what American Night is? So like every Wednesday night after class, we all go down to the bar down the street, and it's kind of like your middle school dance, like all your favorite music, and then just like french fries till midnight, and you're just dancing and screaming, having so much fun with like 80, 80 of your best friends. It's really awesome. That sounds like the best experience ever. I am definitely jealous, and we'll definitely try to visit there. <laughs> but in the meantime, we're actually going to have to come right back with Jess after this short break. And I'm Mary Malloy. And this is Good Morning Emerson. Wake up with us. Welcome back. We're here with Emerson student Jess Costas, where we're about to find out which celebrities she thinks would be the best to travel with. All right, Jess, are you ready to play? I am. Okay, so who would you rather travel with, Harry Styles or Prince Harry? Ooh. Prince Harry. I feel like he has like more ends, and I'm not really a directioner personally. But interesting. Okay. See, I understand that. I think that'd be really fun, but I think I'd go with Harry Styles. I hear that like the Prince like 
Meghan Markle has so many rules and stuff she needs to follow. They probably have to be so careful about anything they post or any photos they take. Yeah, I don't True. know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Leonardo DiCaprio or Miley Cyrus? Ooh, very different. Miley Cyrus. I feel really? like she'd just be super fun. And I don't know, how old is Leo now? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Honestly, fair. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> I think I'm going with Miley on this one, too. All right. Um, Michael Phelps or Ariana Grande? Choose wisely. Interesting. I think I'm more of like a Michael Phelps person. I'm going to go with that. Okay. But like, I love to swim, so I think that'd be really <laughs> cool, too. I respect you it. You definitely get to go it. to like the coolest pools ever. So, yeah. definitely. Okay. Chrissy Teigen or John Legend? Chrissy. Ooh. Chrissy. Yeah. I'm going to go John. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I'm going to go John on this one. Okay. I feel like that would be a lot of fun. Oprah or Katy Perry? Oprah. I feel like she's so wise and she could like tell me all these great things about all the locations. I think I'm going to go Oprah too. Yeah, she definitely <laughs> would just know so many different <laughs> things. All right. Justin Bieber or Beyonce? Beyonce. Beyonce? Beyonce. No question. Yeah. yeah. Fair. <laughs> Adele or Britney Spears? Adele. I don't know. Britney Spears is like, I don't really know that much about her, I guess, but she seems like, I don't know if I can trust her. A little while. I'm going to go Britney. <laughs> It'd be unique, to say yes. the least. All right. And Ryan Gosling or Julie Andrews? This is like a really tough one, but I'd have to go with Julie Andrews, I think. Okay. Yeah. Last one. Me or Sydney? Uh, ah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 All righty. So, thank you, Jess. Now, let's hear from Natalie Benoit about all the wild news taking the world by storm. Adam Levine grabbed plenty of attention when he went shirtless for the Super Bowl halftime show. But it turns out his shirt on is just as buzzworthy. The Maroon 5 lead singer wore a brown checkered tank top before bearing his chest on stage. Social media users quickly saw a resemblance between Levine's shirt and home furniture. Some of the similarities viewers posted include curtains, couches, and even pillows. I guess retro-inspired print is making a comeback. President Donald Trump gave his second State of the Union address less than a week ago, and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi clapped back. Sort of. Pelosi was seen sarcastically applauding and smirking at the end of President Trump's speech. The House Speaker quickly became a viral meme with the hashtag Pelosi clap. Twitter users have compared the clap with their own relatable moments, like the feeling of pride your friends get when they do the bare minimum. Pelosi later revealed that the clap was not meant to be sarcastic, but was rather a genuine appreciation of Trump's unifying statement. Supermodel Tyra Banks is making dreams come true with Model Land. The life-size actress is opening an amusement park in Santa Monica for aspiring models. In an Instagram post, Banks said she is creating a place where everyone can be a model, a place where all beauty is celebrated. The park will be the first attraction of its kind. It will include retail, dining, and interactive elements. The project has been in the works for 10 years, but Model Land is set to open later this year. And in an awkward case of flower misplacement, John Quiqui was gifted a bouquet of flowers, except they weren't meant for him. Twitter users laughed with Quiqui when he realized months later that the flowers on his desk were meant for someone else. The new hire originally thought his coworkers were welcoming him onto the team, and instead of interrupting his photo session, the other employees let the newbie keep the bouquet. The funny office mix-up ended up on the Twitter Moments page this past Saturday. Well, that's all I've got for you. What hot topics are on your mind? Tweet the hashtag WTGME and let me know. Well, I'd like to know how to get a ticket to Model Land. I know, seriously, it seems like such a good time. I was just wondering the exact same thing. Yeah. But we actually need to go to a quick commercial break right now. When we get back, Kenya Hunter is going to show us how to make a great little snack. Pretty healthy, too. Stay tuned. Will you? Yes. 
Catch Fast Forward Rewind right here on the Emerson Channel. Your one-stop shop for all things orientation. Come see our shows live at 7 o'clock all of next week. Can't wait to see you there. See ya. There's a live studio audience, and they're just going to laugh at everything we say. And it's going to be awesome. It's just this never-ending cycle of positivity and community and late-night content. I'm going to wear a suit. You should probably wear one, too. What do you think? I think you should drink up, because it's closing time. Welcome back. We're here with our Healthy Living correspondent, who's here to help us make some delicious smoothies. Yes, I am. So today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the keto diet. Every year, the Ameri every year, there's a new American craze going on in American diet. And this time, it's the keto diet. So I'm here to just make a smoothie and talk to you guys about that. So today, awesome. I have strawberries, raspberries, um, blackberries, and spinach. So, and coconut milk so we'll go ahead and Ooh. put the coconut milk in there hey, i didn't know what you were going to do i saw the orange juice i saw the coconut yeah so yeah so with the keto diet um i use coconut milk because i'm actually allergic to almond milk which oh. so yeah so and coconut you know promotes a lot of good healthy yeah. things i promote i prefer coconut milk yeah totally same and then put in two cups of blackberries and let's just hope this goes well all right and then I thought keto was mostly um, like protein, so you can eat fruit on it you as well. You can eat fruit. So okay. this is just a quick smoothie for like your morning time. Oh, goodness gracious. It's just okay. for your morning time <laughs> things. And then we'll go ahead and blend it up a little bit before we put in the spinach. Yeah, it's looking really full. Yeah. And then, so yeah, the keto diet is mostly um, high, high protein, low carbohydrate. So yeah, it's looking great so far, right? And then yeah, we'll go ahead, be awesome. go ahead and add some spinach, if I can get this back open. So what kind of keto things have you guys tried? I haven't tried any. I know someone who is doing it, and it seems like such a commitment mm -hmm. that right. like I'm not sure if I have that discipline, but I like respect anyone who can, because that's wild. We could always pour a little bit of that into Thank here, Thank you so actually. much, yeah, of course. actually. Um, no, I agree. My sister's actually doing keto. She it's been working out great for her. She loves it. It's turned into like a lifestyle. But I don't know. For me personally, I don't eat meat or anything. And I feel like that's a main part you of keto. Eat meat? Yeah. So. I am actually vegetarian as well. Oh, look at that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, this is perfect. This I could definitely perfect. do this. And then you use the coconut milk just to keep it vegan for sure. Yeah, exactly. And then we'll go ahead and blend it up some more. Okay. This looks awesome. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> little Miss Happy. <laughs> you know what? I can already tell it and tastes now great. And we have our great keto smoothie. You can eat it for breakfast. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you guys like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Kenya. All right, thank you. Guys. <laughs> they were well, delicious. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we assume. it's now time to wrap things up. So thank you so much for waking up with us, and we will definitely see you Wednesday. <laughs>